This is the NVIDIA H100 chip. According to industry reports, it costs around $30,000. It's currently illegal to sell to China under US export restrictions. And according to leaked screenshots circulating in tech circles, there are encrypted telegram channels where you can reportedly buy one right now for approximately $35,000, delivered to Shanghai in 72 hours. No questions asked. Analysts estimate that China has smuggled roughly $5 billion in banned AI chips in just 18 months. And sources suggest that number is growing exponentially. By the end of this video, you'll understand why every expert saying, we've got this under control, is either lying or hasn't studied history. Because what's happening right now with semiconductors has happened before, three times, and every single time it ended the same way. October the 2022. The Biden administration drops what many consider the most aggressive tech embargo in modern history. No advanced AI chips to China, not through official channels, not through allies, not through anyone. The message was clear, if you want to build the future, you play by American rules. China's response? Silence. No outrage. No diplomatic protests. Just silence. And that silence, as we now understand from multiple intelligence reports, was the sound of smuggling networks activating. Within six months, according to industry insiders, H100 chips started appearing in Shanghai data centers. The same chips powering ChatGPT. The same chips that were supposedly impossible to access. Singapore became a hub. Shell companies with legitimate sounding names like Southeast Asia Cloud Solutions and Pacific Digital Infrastructure started filing paperwork. On paper, everything looked clean. Chips bound for AI research facilities, standard tech equipment, gaming server components. But here's what multiple sources suggest is really happening. They're registering companies with addresses that reportedly trace to mailbox services, filing customs paperwork, showing chips bound for facilities that, upon investigation, don't appear to exist, using what experts call invoice fraud to reclassify $30,000 H100s as $500 gaming GPUs. Then, shipping through Malaysia, Vietnam, sometimes Dubai, before the chips reach their actual destination in Shenzhen or Beijing. Industry estimates put this at roughly $3 billion in 2023, approximately $5 billion in 2024. And US enforcement? Some analysts suggest they've seized maybe 2%, maybe. Now, here's what most people miss. This isn't new. This exact pattern has destroyed every technological monopoly in history. And once you see the pattern, you can't unsee it. There are four stages, setup, overreach, adaptation, and collapse. Right now, based on observable evidence, we're in stage three, accelerating towards stage four faster than anyone in Washington wants to admit. Let me show you this pattern with what I consider the clearest example in history. Then you'll see why the semiconductor monopoly is already broken. India, 1858. The British Empire controlled salt, not oil, not gold, salt. Something so basic that controlling it meant controlling the population. The Salt Act made it illegal for Indians to produce or sell salt without British permission. British monopoly, heavy taxes, ruthless enforcement. This was stage one, complete control over an essential resource. For approximately 70 years, it worked perfectly. The monopoly generated massive revenue. It reinforced British dominance. It created a population dependent on British supply chains. They didn't just control salt, they used it as a model for total economic control. Textiles, trade routes, currency. The entire Indian economy existed to serve British interests. That's stage two. Using the monopoly, not just for profit, but for absolute geopolitical control. Then 1930 happened. Gandhi walked what historians record as 240 miles to the Arabian Sea. When he arrived, he bent down and picked up a handful of salt. That's it. He broke the law by producing salt. This was stage three the adaptation. The opposition wasn't fighting British military power. They were exploiting the structural weakness. You can't enforce a monopoly on something anyone can produce. The British response proved they'd already lost control. Historical records show they arrested around 60,000 people. They deployed violence. They doubled down on enforcement. But you can't arrest everyone. You can't control every coastline. Millions of Indians started producing salt. The monopoly didn't erode gradually. It shattered. 17 years later, India was independent. The British didn't just lose salt control, they lost India. That's stage four. Now watch this exact pattern play out with semiconductors, based on what we're seeing unfold. Stage one, the United States achieved a breakthrough in advanced chip manufacturing. Seven nanometer, five nanometer, three nanometer processes. The chips that power AI, autonomous vehicles, military systems, everything that defines 21st century power. They didn't just develop this technology, they weaponized it. NVIDIA designs the chips. TSMC in Taiwan manufactures them. ASML in the Netherlands provides the only machines capable of producing them. And the US controls access to all of it. They built a global choke point where every cutting edge chip flows through American controlled supply chains. Stage two, 
October 2022. What many experts describe as the most aggressive export controls in modern history. China banned from advanced AI chips. Japan, Netherlands, South Korea pressured to comply. ASML blocked from selling EUV lithography machines. The entire semiconductor supply chain became a weapon. This wasn't economics. This was geopolitics. The stated goal was to prevent China from developing independent AI capabilities. Stage 3. Right now. And this is where the pattern becomes what I believe is mathematically certain. Chinese entities adapted instantly. They went underground. According to reports that surfaced in late 2024, enforcement agencies identified over 400 shell companies believed to be involved in chip smuggling operations. 400. These aren't amateur operations. These appear to be networks operating with intelligence agency level sophistication and resources. Consider this reported case. A 34-year-old logistics coordinator in Shenzhen, whose identity remains protected, was reportedly offered around $50,000 to move what he was told was gaming equipment through Vietnam. He didn't ask questions. Over approximately 18 months, sources suggest he facilitated the movement of an estimated $200 million in banned chips. He's believed to be one of hundreds doing this. One person. Roughly $200 million. Scale that across the entire network and you see how estimates reached $5 billion. But here's what makes stage four inevitable in my analysis. China isn't just smuggling, they're learning. Every chip that crosses the border gets reverse engineered. Every design gets studied. Reports indicate Huawei is developing domestic AI processors. SMIC pushed what appears to be seven nanometer production without EUV machines, something Western analysts previously said was impossible. Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent are reportedly investing billions in Chinese AI infrastructure built on both smuggled chips and domestic alternatives. China doesn't need to match NVIDIA perfectly. They need good enough. And in technology, good enough plus independence beats perfect plus dependency every single time. Current estimates from Georgetown's Center for Security and Emerging Technology suggest China is at approximately 70 to 80 percent of what researchers call threshold capability the point where they're good enough to build functional AI systems without American chips. Timeline? Some analysts say 18 to 36 months. Others suggest maybe less. Once they cross that threshold, everything changes. Not gradually, suddenly. Other nations will have options. India, Brazil, Southeast Asia, they won't need American permission anymore. They won't accept American pricing. They won't tolerate American conditions. The monopoly pricing power disappears. The geopolitical leverage evaporates. And here's what I find most concerning. Every American strategic plan, every military doctrine, every intelligence assessment is built on the assumption that America maintains AI chip dominance. But that assumption appears to be already false. The estimated 5 billion in smuggled chips suggests this. The enforcement challenges prove it. The approaching threshold indicates it. Remove that assumption and every strategy becomes invalid simultaneously. This is why stage four isn't just about chips in my view. It's about the entire framework of American technological power. And we're watching what looks like it's collapse in real time. Now let me address what you're thinking. This time is different. America has advantages. China can't innovate. The British believed in imperial permanence when Gandhi picked up that handful of salt. They were wrong. Every monopoly believes it's different. Based on historical patterns, none of them are. Technology won't save this monopoly in my assessment. Technology is why it's collapsing. Semiconductor design software can be copied. Manufacturing knowledge can be stolen. Smuggling networks use the same encrypted communication tools that were supposed to protect American interests. Available data shows China produces approximately twice as many STEM graduates as America annually. They're not innovation deficient, they're access deficient. And evidence suggests they're solving that problem right now. In my view, you can't maintain a technology monopoly against a nation of 1.4 billion people with seemingly unlimited resources and existential motivation. It appears mathematically impossible. The structure itself looks unsustainable. So what happens next based on this pattern? Stage four, not might happen, will happen. The monopoly will shatter. Not because America becomes weak, because monopolistic control in a globalized world appears inherently unstable. It's not politics. It's what I see as structural mechanics. Water finds cracks, always. And we're at an estimated $5 billion in chips flowing through those cracks annually and growing. That's not just a statistic. That's a symptom. The symptom of what appears to be a monopoly in its final stage. If you want to understand the other monopolies showing these exact symptoms right now, subscribe to this channel. Because what I just showed you is one pattern. There are dozens more playing out in finance, energy systems, currency markets. And if you can recognize the pattern, you can position yourself before the collapse instead of being blindsided by it. 
The next video breaks down the specific decisions made decades ago that, in my analysis, guaranteed today's failure, the players who appear to have seen this coming and positioned accordingly, the structural weaknesses that were baked into the system from the beginning. Hit the notification bell because when stage four hits, mainstream sources won't tell you. They'll be too busy explaining why nobody could have seen it coming. Drop a comment. What other monopolies do you see in stage three right now? Because pattern recognition is a skill. The more you practice, the earlier you spot the symptoms. An estimated $5 billion in smuggled chips. Enforcement proving challenging. Threshold capability potentially 18 months away. The pattern appears to be already in motion. The only question is whether you see it coming. This is how systems seem to collapse based on history. Not through official announcements. Through the slow accumulation of symptoms that suddenly reach critical mass and shatter everything built on them. The machine is revealing itself. Are you watching?